Hello everyone, in last video we have seen the design of eccentrically loaded bolted joint for uh, one type where the load was lying in the plane containing the bolt. So in this video we will be discussing the two cases of eccentrically loaded uh, bolted joints where in one case load will be acting in a direction perpendicular to the axis of the bolt and in the second case load will be acting in a direction parallel to the axis of the bolt and we will be solving two problems for both of these cases. So in this figure, uh, you'll be you can focus on the right figure. So here you can see the uh, bracket. So its front view is shown here and its side view, the bracket will be in this uh, shape and this will be fixed to the wall by means of this uh, three rows of bolts. So here one row is coming there, one row and another row so that in each row two bolted bolts will be used. And here the axis of the bolt will be lying in this direction and here the load is acting in the direction in this direction so here load is in a direction that is perpendicular to the axis of the bolt and that is this eccentric loading case and the respective or required equations for solving this problem can be found in the data book in this page that is given from equation 9.7 and it is shown in the figure 9.2 the similar figure you can see here here also the bolt axis are coming in this direction and the eccentric load is acting in a direction perpendicular to this one and this uh, distance between this load and this uh, point will be known as eccentricity and here uh, we will be calculating or we will be following a procedure that we will be seeing now. So this load will be uh, trying to tilt this one, tilt this bracket about this edge and this edge is known as tilting edge. So this edge is known as tilting edge that one is named at this point A and this will be creating or we will be seeing what is the effect of this force. So you can transfer this force from this eccentric point to the location of the bolt then you will be having a force acting downwards and an opposite force you can consider and this with along this will be creating a couple. So finally you will be having a force and a moment that is acting about this tilting edge and that value of moment will be equal to F in V and we will be seeing the effect of both of this load. So finally you will be having this force F and the moment about tilting edge that is F into E. So this force F will be taken by each of this volt and that will be known as the primary shear load. So here in this figure if uh, you can see six number of bolts. So this will be taking some primary load, this will be taking some primary load and since each of the volt are of same uh, dimension the share will be equal and that you can evaluate using this F by N expression. And next you will be seeing the secondary force and secondary force is so this F will be producing the primary shear load which is actually shear as it is uh, tangential to the cross section of the bolt. But this will be creating secondary normal load because this is actually creating a, a bending load. So as a result of this bracket will be bending in this direction due to this moment. So this will be creating a uh, secondary tensile load. So first primary is of shear nature and secondary is of tensile and here you have to find the value of uh, or you will be taking the position of the bolt where the maximum uh, load is coming. So maximum load will be coming and that you can evaluate using this one. So maximum load will be coming at the location of the bolt where it is situated at a maximum distance from the tilting edge. So tilting edge is coming here and the distance to the bolt locations can be measured from this position. So if you are observing this is the bolt location where this maximum or it is situated at the maximum distance from the tilting edge. So for evaluating the secondary maximum tensile force to design, you will be taking this value that is L1 is the maximum distance to the row of bolt which are located far away from the tilting edge. That's why only they are taking L1 for evaluating this uh, secondary tensile force. So here it is similar to Fe into L1 we have seen in the previous case also. So secondary equal to Fe into L1 that is corresponding to this one. And divided by 2 is coming because 2 rows of bolt are there at each of this position. So in side view if you are seeing you can see only one bolt but behind that this one is coming and behind this 2. So 2 uh, number of bolts are coming in each row. And into L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square where L1 is the distance of first row, second row and third row L1, L2, L3 from the tilting edge. And once we are having the primary, remember primary load is shear nature, primary load is of shear nature and secondary load, load is of normal nature, then you can calculate the resultant 
in terms of normal or in terms of tensile that means this is these equations are given and this is similar to uh, using maximum principal stress theory and maximum shear stress theory so this one is actually formed according to maximum uh, normal that means you are finding the or you are converting the shear load and normal load in terms of maximum normal tensile load and the second one you are actually using the maximum shear stress theory or you are converting the shear and normal load in terms of maximum shear load and here one correction is there the in shear load actually the value that is coming should be this should be instead of f dash square this should be 4 f dash uh, the or 4 f dash square so sorry this should be 4 f dash square that is actually a correction so instead of uh, f dash square it should be 4 f dash square now we will be solving a problem for this eccentrical load so here you can see a, a similar problem in this figure that that we have discussed uh, its theory so a bracket is fixed to uh, wall by means of four bolts so here only four number of bolts are there or two rows of bolts are there so you can have only this l1 and l2 that means the tilting edge will be across this AA. So, this will be the tilting edge and this moment will be acting about this point and value of moment will be equal to F into E where this F is equal to 10 kilo newton or 10 into 10 raised to 3 newton and E is equal to 300 mm or 0.3 meter and uh, this F will be acting as a shear load. So, you can calculate the primary shear load acting on each of this bolt and you can name this, this primary is of shear nature and you can calculate the value of F1 and from this equation this is equal to F by N so F1 is equal to F by N then here total number of bolt uh, by considering all the rows are 4 so this will be equal to 10 by 4 kilo newton which is 2.4 kilo 2.5 kilo newton or 2500 newton next we will be evaluating the secondary load and here you are knowing the secondary load is of tensile nature so I will be calculating the sec secondary tensile load and I will be calling that this as F2 and you can calculate this is the maximum tensile and I have already mentioned the maximum tensile load will be occurring in the bolt which is located at the farthest distance from this one and that distance is this one. So you can calculate here this L1 similar to this figure that L1 maximum is actually 150 mm or 0.15 meter and L2 is actually this 30 mm is given or 0 0.03 meter. So L1 and L2 value are having. So in this equation, you can substitute to find the maximum tensile load. So F2 max will be equal to F into E into L1 divided by two rows of uh, bolts are there. So 2 into L1 square plus L2 square. All values you are knowing. So F into E is actually given here. L1 is 0.15 and L2 is 0 0.03 meter so from this you can evaluate the maximum value of secondary tensile load so you can you will be getting that secondary tensile load as 9615.8 newton so now you can apply the maximum normal tensile load that means here primary is of shear nature and secondary is of tensile nature so now you can convert it into either resultant tensile or resultant shear for that we will be looking onto the problem so here the allowable shear stress in the bolt is given so we will be calculating the resultant shear load and for that we will be making use of this equation so resultant shear load is given by this expression and in that i already mentioned there is a correction so this f dash should be substituted as 4 f dash square so f dash square will be coming 4 f dash square based on that we will be evaluating the net shear. so here i will be using the notations used in this uh, data book then this f1 primary should be called as f dash and this uh, secondary f2 max should be used as f1 so then only you can substitute this equation so f dash is primary and f1 is secondary instead of f1 and f2 I used so now I can substitute the equation to find the resultant shear load. So here we are having the equation for finding the resultant shear load where F1 is the tensile load that value is 9615.38 Newton and the F dash is the primary shear load and that value is 2500 Newton. So if you are substituting you will be getting this resultant shear load as 5418.85 newton so from this you can evaluate the 
resultant shear stress so uh, sorry resultant shear stress will be evaluated as tau and which is equal to the shear load divided by shear area and area to be taken is the minimum tensile area and this can be equated to the tau allowable so this value you can substitute the resultant load is fs is this one and we will be substituting atshs which is the unknown to be find out and this tau allowable is given in the question which is 40 mega pascal so that can be substituted in 40 uh, mega pascal as itself that is 40 newton per mm square then you will be getting 18 units of mm square and if you are solving this one you will be getting the tensile area as 135.47 mm square so similar to the last problem you can select the suitable bolt using table 9.8 so in bolt chapter you can look onto this table 9.8 and you can select the suitable bolt so if you are seeing the area of the bolt uh, which is coming just above this 135.47 will be of uh, that is 157 only is coming so you will have to select you can look on to that corresponding table that is given in page number 141 then finally you can select the bolt is of m16 by 2 so this is the answer or the solution that we have to select this bolt for this uh, particular application where this eccentric load is acting so in this last part we will be studying the last case of this eccentrically loaded bolted joints where load is acting in a direction parallel to the x of the bolt so here you can see load is acting in this direction and it is parallel to the bolts so so this load are acting parallel and here also will be seeing the effect so uh, here also you will be considering the tilting edge and here you can see two bolt means this will be having an isometric projection like this and this will be drawing roughly so this isometric projection of this one will be coming like this and one uh, bolt will be coming here 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 so four or two rows of bolt are there and this will be the tilting edge about which this will be getting tilted and here also the effect of load so this load will be acting in a direction and this will be acting parallel to the axis of the bolt means this will be creating the primary effect of load this will be to create that means primary will be of tensile or normal load it will be creating and secondary effect will be considered that is created due to the moment which it is created about the tilting edge so if you are seeing this is the eccentricity or the distance from this tilting edge to load point and this will be creating a moment of f into e so if you are considering this is actually elongating the bolt so secondary will also create a tensile load so here both secondary and primary are of tensile load or tensile nature so you can directly add this one and then before so equations for solving this kind of is actually not given in data book but you can use the same concept here first i will be evaluating the primary that is f dash you can evaluate f dash will be equal to the f divided by total number of bolt that is 25 kilonewton divided by 4 you will be getting 6.05 kilonewton or 6250 newton next you can evaluate the secondary and secondary will be evaluated the location which is located at the farthest position from the uh, tilting edge so here tilting edge is occurring and this row of bolt are nearer to this one and you can see or you can substitute the value here l1 is uh, given l1 is uh, this l1 is 75 mm and l2 l2 is 225 mm and l or e is equal to 500 mm so you can calculate the secondary force that is f1 you can calculate so this is secondary and this one we have evaluated is primary and secondary force will be equal to the same equation you can use f into e is the moment into uh, the l2 l2 is the maximum distance from this uh, tilting edge two because two rows of bolt are coming into l1 square plus l2 square so here uh, f value you are knowing f value is 25 kilo newton or 25 into 10 raised to 3 e value is corresponding to this l which is 500 mm or 0.5 meter l2 is the maximum distance from tilting edge 225 mm or 0.225 meter and l1 value you are having which is minimum 0 0.075 meter or 75 mm so if you are solving this one you will be getting the secondary uh, tensile load this is also of tensile nature so that will be getting 25,000 newton or 25 kilo newton so if you are seeing the secondary is of tensile nature and primary is also of tensile nature this is also of tensile nature so you can add this uh, load to evaluate the resultant load 
so the resultant load will be equal to f dash that is primary tensile load plus f1 that is the secondary tensile load then you will be getting the maximum load is of 31,250 newton so uh, here also the property the maximum tensile stress is given because this total load is tensile force this will be creating tensile stress and you can equate to the allowable tensile strength that is given in the question so if you are solving this one you can evaluate this normal stress which is equal to the resultant load divided by the throat area which is the across the weakest section so resultant load is 31,250 newton divided by 80 and this will be equated to the allowable tensile strength of the material which is given as 60 mega pascal or 60 newton per mm square so if you are solving you will be getting this 80 as 520.84 new mm square so this you can look on to the or you can ref refer on to the table 9.8 and that is coming in page 142 in your data book so then you can uh, select the suitable board so if you are seeing finally this will be corresponding to the next higher value of this area above 520 will be around 550 and that will happen for a bolt of m27 by 1 that means a iso metric thread uh, which is having major diameter of 27 mm and pitch of 1 mm so this will be uh, satisfying or this will be working under this eccentric load acting for this case so uh, we have seen the two cases or two types of eccentric loading in this video